Hello there. Welcome to Joy Learning. It's time for literature with Juma Alabi. I'm sure you're going to have the lovest and the most enjoyable time that you've ever had on literature. Today, we are going to look at uh, The Lion and the Jew. We've, been we've read it, uh, we've discussed it in your classrooms, and today we are going to analyze the text in Titus. And so we are going to take aspects, bits of it, and I'm sure by the end of today's revision show, you will never move away from your set when it's time for a revision show here on Joy Learning. So let's look at our objectives for today. At the end of today's revision show, we shall be able to give account of the plot in the drama, The Lion and the Jewel. We shall also be able to identify at least three major events in the drama. And then outline three themes. There are a lot of themes, but all I'm asking for is we should be able to outline at least three themes. Then discuss any of the themes identified. So whatever theme that we identify together from your seat at home, from the studio here, you should be able to discuss it. And write the structure of the play. I'm sure your teachers have discussed it with you. But we are also going to look at the structure of the play. And then outline five cultural elements demonstrated in the play. And finally, we should be able to demonstrate the use of at least five dramatic techniques that was used by the, by the author of the, uh, the lion and the jewel. And so, hello, wherever you are, call somebody, call a friend to come and take a seat, take your pen, take your notebook, relax in your seat, and let's roll along. So I've given you a picture of a lion and a picture of a man. Now these two pictures you see represent something. What does it represent? Write it down as you go on. Beneath it, I'm also displaying a picture of a jewel and a picture of a lady. Of course, I can use any other lady apart from yours truly, Jima, right? Great. Now let's look at this picture again. And so the picture you see now is a picture of a lion and a picture of an old man. Mm hmm. Who are they? What does it represent? Does it represent anything? Of course it does. And so we are looking at the lion. Who represents this man you see on your right? Depending on where you are sitting, you can be seeing it on your left. So the man you see and the lion you see represent one thing. And the jewel you see on one hand and the other jewel you see, the lady there, also represents another. And the conclusion of the matter is we are looking at this lion and this jewel. What about the lion and the jewel by Wooly Soyinka? I'm sure in your classrooms, your teachers have taken time to give you an update, a background knowledge of who Wooly Soyinka is. I'm sure you learned that he is one of the African most prolific writer. He's not just um, a dramatist or a playwright, he's also a poet. Now, he's won one of the best awards that we can think of. So he won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1986. Now, Sayinka is also a political activist. 
And so as we go along with our analysis of this book, you're going to see an element of politics in there. Not the regular politics, but politics even in our homes, politics in our relationships. It will all surface as we go along. Now, his notable works include The Child of Brother Jerome, Congis Harvest, I'm sure you've heard of it, Death and the King's Husband, and the Lion and the Jewel. And so the Jewel we see, and the Lion we see. Let's go on. Now, the first objective that I said we should be able to do today is that we should be able to summarize the plot of the book we've read as revision. And so we shall be able to summarize the book, the lion, and the jewel. Now, don't forget that I've thought to you, and I'm sure your teachers have done as well, thought to you all the elements of drama. We took our time and went through. We saw that we have plots, setting, theme. Mm -hmm. What else? Characters. All the things that we discussed earlier are what we are going to focus on as we analyze this drama. What did we say a plot is? We said that the plot is the time. Did we say that? Did we say the plot is a piece of land? Of course not. We said the plot is the sequential arrangement of events in a literary work. The sequential arrangement, the step-by-step -step arrangement. And so now, let's look at the step-by-step -step arrangement of the lion and the jewel. Now, where does the play, the, the play actually occur? And so if we look at the setting, then we can say that the play took place in the village of Ilojinle in Yoruba, Nigeria. That becomes our setting, our place where the, the, poor, the writer um, had in mind as the area where the play actually took place. Now we can also say that The Lion and the Jewel is a comedy play spinning around four main characters. We are going to take our time and have a quick revision of these characters. You also remember that in our previous lessons, we took our time to look at what comedy is. What did we say comedy is? Write it down. After our analysis, you will actually determine whether it's a comedy, a tragedy, or as a tragic comedy. Is it a comedy, tragedy, or tragic comedy? We will be able to determine all that after our analysis. I just mentioned that the whole play evolves around four characters. And who are these characters? And so we are looking at Baroka, who happens to be the elderly chief of in lingerie, we also look at Lakunle, a teacher, Sidi, the bill of the village, and Sadiku, who happens to be the eldest wife of Baroka. The characters that we've identified, did they all have a role to play towards the development of this play? Of course. They all had their unique roles that they played. Let's go on. We are still looking at the plot. Now, development of issues among these four characters that we've identified revolve around the modern fanatics and traditional devotees. And so people who resort to um, the fried rice, um, let's go to the movies, 
let's wear some jeans and the people who resort to strictly let's put on some cloth let's cover our whole body let's go to the theater let's go and sit under the tree and play some awari let's go around and play some mampe the traditional fanatics and the people who also believe that hey times have evolved we no longer go to sit under the tree to play awari we no longer sit under the tree to play ampe we no longer have time to always sit around now let's step out a little we are tired of wearing the cloth now let's wear some skimpy dresses and show some skin so as we go on we are going to see the the arguments between these two roles one on modern one on tradition now those who ascribe to modern ideals wants a modernization of the village and so you see that in the villages um, long ago sometimes in the night you see everybody move out from their homes to come and gather around so they narrate stories so you hear of them telling us about the anansi stories about asian stories and so on they sit around the fire to enjoy some bonding now they want to the modernized people the people who believe in the modernization want that now we won't sit around the fire let's put some flat screen there and watch some la liga and watch some latest movie and so on those who sought um to achieve or to uphold their traditional beliefs were they able to do that and those who were championing the modernization were they also able to do that that forms part of the plot that we are looking at now the other assembly made up of older people opposes invasion of modernity in their village and so as we go on you realize that a group of people the younger generation prefers modernization while the older generation prefers that we stick to the rules this is what we came to meet this is what our forefathers preaches and because this is what they preach mm, we have to move on with that we also see as the story progresses as the play progresses Lakunle and Baruki, Baruki's desire to be with City, and so I mentioned the forming characters that evolve around this play. We mentioned who? Lakunle, Baruki. Mm -hmm. Who else? We also saw Sidiku, and then City. So Baruki's desire to be with City sets the ground. For the drama, Lakunli seduces Sidi in a catcher's fashion, while Baroka uses cunning ways to get her for himself. Mm -hmm. I'm sure in your reading, you encountered some of the things that saw Lakunle um, trying to seduce Sidi in a catcher's fashion. Oh, let's marry. Mm, let's marry we can pay the bride price later and that is what some of the modern people this time are going for is it necessary to really pay a bride price of course it is and that is what the traditionalists are saying here in this drama but on one fashion lakuni the teacher feels that oh which one is all this go meet your family go do this go do that Let's just marry. But Sidi opposed that because she is also accustomed to the old tradition. Baroque's victory in marrying Sidi, oh, so the plot is revealing that Baroque eventually married Sidi. But how did he marry Sidi? 
How did he succeed? Over Lakunle, we will find out. Baroque's victory in Marin City displays the triumph of tradition over modernity. How did tradition win over modernity? We will find out in our analysis. Lakunle and Baroque's context for City's love displays another confrontation between tradition and modernity. City has to choose between having a modern or a traditional marriage. At the end of the day, which of the marriages did City get? Did she get the traditional marriage or she got the modern kind of marriage? Now, as we go on, we realize that Lakunle's refusal to accept these traditional requests before their union weakened modernity. Because all the things that Lakunle was preaching, Sidi was firm on her decision. We are going this way. This is the way we have to go. Meet my family. Pay my bride price. Until you pay my bride price, no way. I'm not going anywhere with you. And because Lakunle, the school teacher, yes, Lakunle was a school teacher, we will find out when we get to character analysis. Because Lakunle was not able to live up to expectation, he lost City. Baroka then seduced City. Uh huh. How did he seduce her? Leaving her with no option than marriage. And so, the final part of the plot is tradition triumphant over modernity. Now, what is the symbolic meaning of the lion and the jewel? Why did Willy Soyinka choose this? He could have chosen any other title, but he chose the lion and the jewel. Now, the lion here refers to who? Baruka. And the jewel here refers to who? City, of course. And so, there you go. You have your lion and an epitome, a representation of Baruka. But, teacher, why did you represent Baruka with this old man? Of course, Baruka was an old man, 62 years. And he wanted the young city to marry. And so I got this from the internet, a picture from the internet. Um, you can see that down there. This is just a representation of what Baruka stands for. And not Baruka actually as depicted in the text by Willy Sonyinka. One may ask, why was Baroka being associated or linked to a lion? Now, a lion radiates a sense of authority. And so even in movies, <laughs> if you hear a lion roar, sometimes you get scared, even in your seat at home. And so a lion radiates a sense of authority, evidence in its majestic walk, and the holding high of its head. I don't think you've ever seen a, a lion coming with the head down. Of course, it raises the head high and works majestically. Now, its been symbolizes a crown, giving him the title King of the Jungle. Its roar, which can be heard over 15 miles, causes animals to hurry for safety. And it's a means of alerting its prey of its approach. Is that what Baruka depicted? Mm -hmm. It could be. And maybe that is why he was named the lion. Now in the play, Baruka exudes authority. And so if you've really read the text, you realize that Wherever he found himself, he was accompanied because he was a chief 
okay, we could take it in an angle that because he was a chief, he always had an escort. How did he become the chief of the village? He inherited it from his father. And so from your reading, you realize that he didn't just get up one day to become the chief of the village, but because of what the patriarchal system that we have. Baruka is always accompanied by a wrestler, and so like a macho man following him all over the place. As you prepare for the final exams, one of the things that you have to take note of is that anytime you are analyzing the character, we will get to the character analysis as we look at this. Now we are looking at why lion and why jewel, okay? But as you go to the analysis and you've been asked to analyze the character Baroka, you take note of some of these minor things. Are they minor? No, they might be minor as you read, but it plays a lot of role in the development of your essays. And so you have to take note of them. Now, the young people, including CD, Holds dancing. So we are talking about the appearance of Baruka and what happens anytime he steps out. Now, in the text, you realize that Baruka, when he even gets to the market area or wherever he gets to, and people are working, people are dancing, whatever people are doing, they halt, they stop because the king is passing. And when they stop, what do they do? They bow as well. And that is an epitome of tradition. Now, the young people, including C.D. Hall's dancing, the role play act of the lost traveler. I'm sure you remember the lost traveler. And Neil, to pay respect to Baroka, who has approached them. And this is an indication of the royalty title he holds. Another trait of a lion that's exhibited by Baroka is his strength. And so somewhere in the text, he told Sadiku, uh, his first wife, that, oh, they think I'm not strong. Was I not in the battle? Didn't I win against so and so? And that depicts that he assumed that he came out with some physical strength physically and sexually, because he had five wives. And I'm sure if he wasn't strong, he wouldn't be able to keep all the wives. Now his masculine figure is brought to life when he asks Sadiku, what makes Sidi think he's an old man that she can't accept him to be her husband? Now this is an extract from the text, an indication that as you prepare for the final exams, don't just read the summary, read the text, get appropriate extracts to support your analysis when you're answering the questions. So this is a question from Baroka. He asks us, Sadiku, the wife, did I not have the festival of rain? Defeat the men in the long tossing match? Do I not still with the most fearless ones, hands the leopard and the boar at night and save the farmers? Goes from Featherham. Do any of my wives report of failing in my manliness? The strength of them are still worries long before the lion does. And so we are getting an indication of the physical and the sexual strength that Baroka came with. Now let's come to the jewel. Now what is a jewel? And so the jewel on the, on the screen, this time I didn't pick any jewel from the internet. I picked myself to represent CD and then we have the jewel here. Now, a jewel is an ornament adorned by women to complement their beauty. 
And so sometimes you find the jewel on their wrist, on their neck, on their fingers, on their ears, among others. And that's what CD has been represented as something valuable, as a jewel. Now, CD is described as a very beautiful young woman. Her beauty comes into prominence when images of her are published in the Lagos based magazine. I'm sure in your reading you encountered <laughs> when the traveler took pictures of her. Right? Do you remember that? And published them in the magazine. Now, when the pictures were published in the magazine, it brought out the actual beauty of Sidi. And so this is Sidi praising herself. Did you see the book? Had he the book that will bestow upon me beauty beyond the dreams of a goddess? For so he said, the book which would announce this beauty to the world. And so this beauty that Sidi herself describes exhibits how valuable she is and the jewel that she stands for. Well done, my learners. How is the analysis going? So far, we've looked at the certain, we've looked at the plots, we've looked at the symbolic representation of the lion and the jewel. Now we are going to take our time and analyze the characters that was presented by Wally Sonyinka in his play, The Lion and the Jewel. So we've seen Baroka, we've seen Lakunle, we've seen Sidi, we've seen Sadiku. Who are they? Did they contribute anything towards the development of the play or the drama? We will find out as we go on. Let's start with Baroka. Sure. So Baroka, we know, is what? The chief. We also know he's an old man. And how old is he? 62 years. He's also a traditionalist who is against his village being influenced by modernity. But as we go on to look at the characteristics of Baroka, we will realize that although he stood firm on his decision of maintaining tradition, mm -hmm, he also had an iota of admiring modernity. What did he do to exhibit that he really was admiring the way people were doing their things? We'll find out. He uses his authority to stop Lakunle and the Ministry of Transportation from streamlining the village. Despite his opposition to his village being modernized, he's attracted by a modern innovation that is his stamping machine. As I mentioned earlier, and I'm sure in your reading you came across it, that although Baroka was firm on tradition, he had a taste for modernity. Now, he is the elderly chief of the village, you've mentioned that. We also saw in the plot that he inherited the position of being a chief from his father. Let's look at some major characteristics of the man, Baroka. He's a cunning man. So when you get a question like um, this, to analyze the character traits of Baroka, one of the things that you can write is that he was cunning. How cunning was Baroka? Let's see. I'm sure you can take notes. Just write uh, Baroka down, circle it, and bring an arrow by it, indicating 
is character traits. So this will help you remember any time you get a question like that and you have to develop it. Write his character traits down. One of them is that he is cunning. Now, when Sadiku approaches Sidi in an attempt to convince her to become Baroque's favorite wife, Sidi remarks, Do you think that I was only born yesterday? The tales of Baroque's little sappers? I know it all. Tell your Lord that Sidi does not sap with married men. She asks Sadiku if she can deny that every woman who has supped with him one night becomes his wife or concubine the next day. Of course, that's tradition. And so their tradition stated that you cannot spend a night with a woman or a man and go your way. The moment you spend a night with a person, the person automatically becomes your husband or your wife. And that is what Sidi was trying to hammer, drum down into Sadiku's uh, mind. Sadiku, don't forget, is who? Great! Is the first wife or the eldest wife of Baruka. We've seen that Baruka is cunning. Why cunning? We'll find out the advice <laughs> he gave to Sadiku to go and lure Sidi to eventually get him, get her. He's a polygamist with several wives and concubines under his belt. I'm sure you know who a polygamist is. Having more than one wife depicts that he had a lot of women, five actually, and he was ready. In fact, he added Sidi to it. We are done looking at the character traits of who? Baruka. What did we say he is? We just said that Baroka is cunning. We also said that he is a polygamist. We also said that he uses and exerts a lot of authority. We also saw he is a traditionalist. So he's a traditionalist. He exerts a lot of authority. Mm -hmm. He's a chief. We all know that. We also identify that he is cunning. Good job. I've told you what to do. I said, write Baroque's name. Draw a circle so you can have something like this. Baroka, mm -hmm. and then you bring an arrow and write his characteristic. Is it a good thing to do? Try that, and it will make learning quite easier for you. Now to the village teacher, Lakunle. Who was Lakunle? And what role did he play towards the development of the play? Let's look at his characteristics or the character Lakunli. Now, Lakunli was a teacher, um, 23 years old, who believes in modern culture. Why? I'm sure you can imagine. Because he got a bit of education. He's an elite captivated by modern technological innovation and modern lifestyle. Because of that, he wanted to transform things in the village, but he was not allowed to do that. He also represents the younger generation who disgust the African traditions 
in favor of Western culture. And that is what some of us young people, my dear learner, I'm sure that is what some of you do, my learners. Now we are trying to shun away from the tradition and move to the modernized way of living. And that is what Lacunle represented in the play. He's popped up in arrogance. And so one of the characteristics that we can actually see of Lacunle is that he was what? Or he is, so you can say he was, or he is, depending on the tense you choose to write your essay. Arrogant. He also represents or disgust the African tradition. Now he tells Sidi that he won't allow her to drive him into an argument because she's a smaller brain compared to his. When asked what makes him utter such an arrogant statement, he defends himself as not the one who has said that. The scientists, he asserts, have proven women are a weaker sex. And so another characteristic, so another trait that we can see of Lacunle is that he has no regard for women. If he really had regard, he wouldn't have wanted to just move away with um, Sidi without paying her bra price. And so we see him here, speaking to Sidi and bringing out his manly powers as he claims. And so he said what? When asked what makes him also such a, he said, she's a smaller brain compared to his. Can you imagine a woman you claim you want to marry? You call her as somebody with a smaller brain and defends himself as not the one who said it, but the scientist. Did the scientist ever say that women have got smaller brain? So in your analysis, you can also have some backing to support. If you want to say that um, Lacunle represents a man with no regard for women, he should have arguments, stronger arguments to support it. And this is an extract, or this is a line that you can use to support your argument. Now, he has a um, wrong impression of what modernity is. Wrong impression of what modernity is. He tells Sadiku after Sidi leaves them to mock the bill following the revelation of the chief's impotency. Can you imagine? Now, within a year or two, I swear, so this is his, his view. Within a year or two, I swear, this town shall see a transformation. We will burn the forest, cut the trees, then plant a modern park for lovers. We will print newspapers every day with pictures of seductive girls. The world will judge our progress by the girls that win beauty contest wrong ideology wrong perception of what modernity stood for that is what we see with Lacunle. we also see he's a witty character why do we say that mm -hmm. he's a witty character so he uses synonymous words to describe the backwardness of his village tradition. So he calls the tradition a savage custom, barbaric, outdated, rejected, denounced, accursed. Mm. All the words you can see displayed on the screen. That is a description of who. Lakunle, that's how he sees his village, the village that he was born into. Now, anytime you ask him why he thinks of such things or he speaks of such, he's got a strong point. He knows what to say. Now, when asked by Sidi whether the bag, which represents his mouth, is empty, has run out of words, and why he stopped, Lakunle replies, 
I own only the shorter companion dictionary, but I've ordered the longer one. You wait. So he exhibits his witty nature, and you can see it from the extract from the lines that I've quoted here. Now let's come to our beautiful city, the Vale of the Village. Now, Siri is a young girl who is against anything entailing ent modern culture. And we thought that strongly when he objected to Lakunle's point of getting married. She stood firm that marrying me requires paying my bride price. Mm -hmm. Great. She's happy remaining a traditionalist and we see that even going to dance at the market square going places to dance to portray the culture exhibits that she remained resolute in holding on to the tradition we also see that she's attracted to an aspect of modernity yeah where was that exhibited do you remember that Good job! That was when her pictures were taken and published in the magazine. She called her friends to come and see and commented about it. She praised herself and showed it to all everybody around that, oh, see me, I'm here. I'm the most beautiful of all. That also describes the character CD. Now, she uh, exemplifies people who defend the customs and traditions of their town. And we've seen how she defended it. So this was her line. The part that shows that she's got an interest in the modern aspect. Did you see the book? Had he the precious book? So he calls the magazine a precious book. That will bestow upon me beauty beyond the dreams of goddess. For so he said, the book which will announce this beauty to the world. Now the third girl replies, the stranger had indeed brought the maxim. However, she tells Sidi, the bale is still feasting his eyes on the images. She praises Sidi's beauty. As seen in the maxim. Now look at the irony. The irony here is that on one part of the maxim, Baruka image was just something small, but Sidi's images were all over. And because her images were all over, Baruka actually took time to flip through to enjoy his eyes, right? Not his mouth. Oh, Sidi, he, referring to the stranger, was right. You are beautiful. On the cover of the book is an image of you, from the top of the head to the stomach, and in the middle leaf, from the beginning of one leaf right across to the end of another, is one of you from head to toe. And this was Baroka making reference to Sidi's. Despite her beauty, we will discover that she was naive. How naive was she? Her naiveness led her to being flirtatious. Her naiveness led her to, do I say maturely? Getting married to Baroka. How did she get married to Baroka? Now, having been told by Sadiku of the Bill's impotence, now we realize when we're looking at the character traits of Baroka that he was cunning. What made him cunning? I told you we are going to discover it in our analysis. Now, this is what he did. Having been told by Sidiku of the bale impotence, Sidi is desirous. 
So, Sadiqu, Baruch's first wife, they planned. Go and tell this young lady that I'm impotent. I know that once she discovers that I'm impotent, she will run here and come and make mockery of me. Once she gets here, mm -hmm, she will not go back. Of course she would not. And so there we go. Let's see what happens. After Sadiqo goes to tell Sidi that, oh, my husband, he's not impotent. This naive girl says, give me the chance to just go and play with him. Do we play with fire? Of course, that's what she did. And fire bent her. Sidi is desirous to deride him. Not only does she want to toy with her old man for her own amusement, but also wants to witness his facial reaction. She pleads with Sadiqu to let her go to the Baal's palace. He tells her. Now listen to what she said. Oh, such an idea is running in my head. Let me to the palace for this supper, he promised me. Sidiku, what a way to mock the devil. <laughs> Sidi wasn't aware that it was all a ploy between the husband, Sidiku, the husband, uh, Sidiku's husband, the king. Sidiku, what a way to mock the devil. So the devil here represents who? Baroka. I shall ask for forgiveness. For my hasty words of not agreeing to marry, of, of not agreeing to marry him, no need to change my answers and consent to be his bride. He must suspect you've told me, but I shall ask a month to think about it. Oh, Sidiku, let me go. I long to see him thwarted, to watch his longing, his twitching hands, which this time cannot rush to listen his child's accord. Mm -hmm. You see how naive this girl was and how flirtatious she could be? She thought she could just go and make mockery <laughs> of a man just because you heard he was impotent. Don't joke with fire. All right, now we have seen Sidi and the role she played. We've analyzed her character. We've seen that she's what, quite naive. She's that village girl who also believes in tradition and so stuck to it. She's also a traditionalist. She believes in the culture of the people. And so she even steps out to go and dance and to marry with people in the village when it's time for marriage. Whom are we looking at now? We are looking at Sadiku. This time, let me go back. We've looked at three characters, three of the main characters. It is your turn. I want you to pick your paper or your book. You've read the lines in the jewel with me. You have some few months to write the exams, and so I'm sure you're done reading. If you are not done, then I'm sure you might have heard the story. Right? Good job. I want you to also come out with the characteristics of Sadiku. What are some of the things that made Sadiku also stand out in the play? Is your turn? Start work, I'm giving you a minute. We are doing the revision together. It shouldn't be one-sided. So let's see how it goes. I thought you just write the name in the middle, circle it, write the name in the middle, circle it, bring arrows by it, and identify the character traits. Good, good. Good.
Now, let's see whether what he outlined is actually in line with this one. Do you see any similarities between what you wrote and what has been displayed? Of course, you see some. Good. So, Sadiku is the eldest wife of Baroka. From her description, we see that she has been faithful to Baroka. It is only a faithful wife who will not be worried about going to fetch another wife for you. That's quite interesting, right? Nobody will do that in this modern time. They are doing it because of tradition. Yeah, believe for tradition, right? Great. Similar to her husband. And so similar to her husband and Sidi, we see that they are all traditionalists. They all have strong belief for tradition and they are all ready to die for it. However, unlike the other two, unlike Sidi and her husband, um, who all have a taste, a little taste for modernity, the husband having the stamping machine, and Sidi also having the desire to take more pictures, to be published in a magazine, and to contest even in a beauty pageant, we see that Sidi Ko was strict traditionalist and was not ready to patronize. So here we see that she's fully devoted to her villagers' tradition. What else do we see about Sidiku? We see that she's a simple-minded elderly woman. Joyous at the revelation of Baroque's impotence. She informs Sidi of the revelation. It is a ploy. So she's simple-minded. If you're not simple-minded, I don't think you, you dance along to the tune of your husband and go and deceive another beautiful young lady. She's also an illiterate. I'm sure if she had had a bit of education, whether formal or non-formal, she would have um, be a, been a bit enlightened and she would know that I can't keep bringing wives to my husband, especially young girls who have um, a bright future ahead of them. And so in analyzing the character traits of Sidiku, we see that she's what? She's the eldest wife of Baroka. She's faithful. We also see that she's a traditionalist, right? So when you write her name as we did earlier and you bring the arrows, you note down these things. We also see that she's simply minded. Simple minded elderly woman. And she's an illiterate. Now, this is seen when Lakunle chides her for allowing Sidi to head to um, Baroque's palace to taunt him. You see that, Charlie? There is no education there. And because there is none education, she was ready to dance to all the tunes. Now, let's look at this extract from the play. This is my plan. You withered face. And I shall start by teaching you. From now on, you shall attend my school <laughs> and take your place with 12 year olds. For though you are nearly 70, your mind is simple and unformed. Have you no shame at your age? You neither read nor write nor think. So you see the arrogance of Lakunle that we discovered. Too arrogant. To talk to an elderly woman like this. Have you no shame at your age? You neither read nor write nor think. You spend your days as a senior wife collecting brides for Baroka. And now, because you have 
sucked him dry. You sent my CD to his shame. <laughs> it's interesting, right? He sends whose CD? His CD or CD? So we see CD is not his CD because he didn't do what was right. Paying off a bride price. I'm sure that if he had paid the bride price, certainly CD would have married him because CD didn't want to be a second wife, a third wife, a fourth wife, a fifth wife, let alone a sixth wife. So here, yeah, from the lines of um, Lakunle, we see and we discover that she's not educated, Sadiku is not educated, and she's nearly 70. If the husband is 62, of course, the wife will also be nearing the same age. Now, the young boy tells the woman that her mind is simple and uninformed. And he says what? You spend your days as a senior wife collecting brides for Baroka. So we see she's illiterate, all right. And we also see that she's simple-minded because every level-headed person will not do that. Agree with your husband. You tell somebody you're impotent. No way. She's simple-minded. She is an illiterate, eldest wife, faithful wife, a traditionalist. Well done, well done, well done, well done. At this point, I want you to get up from your seats, get up a little, stretch a little, and then we will go on. You can pace in your hall, mm -hmm. drink some water, and let's keep on with our analysis because if any question comes from the lion and the jewel we will kill it right good job so keep pacing as we move on to our next objective what is our next objective our next objective is to look at some of the themes let me move away from here Move to some of the things that can be identified in the play. What are some of the themes? Write it down. Let's go. Write it down. We learned that the theme is a central idea in a literary work. The theme is a central idea or the main idea in a literary work. So we know what a theme is. Now that we remember what a theme is, what is the main idea? What is the central idea in the play, The Lion and the Jewel? Great. Did you identify the same thing? So we have traditions and customs, status of women, tradition versus modernity, and so on. Let's just look at this theory. Before we end the lesson, I'm sure you will also come up with other themes that we will look at. Now, when we come to traditions and customs, what are some of the things that actually, so when you're asked to talk about traditions and customs, discuss, so listen to the question, discuss, the theme of traditions and customs as exhibited in the play, The Lion and the Jewel. What are the main points that you're going to pick to discuss? One of them is the issue of bride price. The issue of bride price. So the issue of bride price comes here as part of um, the tradition and customs. So we see the debate on whether bride price should be banned um, is a contentious issue in Africa and non-African countries that are still practicing it. I don't think it should be banned. What do you think? 
You are a young person, my dear young person, but I'm sure you've seen based on the text we've read, based on the discussions we've had so far, you see the essence of bride pride. There is value on you as a woman. And not just any man coming to take you away without any value. Now, still on the issue of bride pride, Lakunle, the young African man who has embraced Western culture, considers the traditional customs in his village as barbaric and savage. And that is why he lost city. As a modernist, he is on a mission to streamline the village by doing away with every aspect of Yoruba tradition in his village and ushering the elements of modernity. Even though he loved Sidi, listen, he didn't and he doesn't want to pay the bride price as a prerequisite for marrying her. Who does that? It's only Lakunle, and eventually he lost her. And so if you have a question like, discuss what led to Lakunle losing Sidi, there are lots of things to talk about. He tells Sidi that paying the bride price, also known as bride worth, is the same as buying a hypha of the market store. Paying the bride price, he reasons, signifies purchasing her as a commodity since he had empowered with a certain amount of money or items in exchange for her. And so we have seen the life of Lakunle. You see Lakunle, mm, because of the little education he's had, he didn't believe in it, in the value of tradition and customs. And so bride price wasn't important to him. But its essence is seen, even in our daily lives. I'm sure mommy, mommy will tell you that daddy paid her bride price before they got married, right? You can ask mommy afterwards. And mommy will share her experience with you. I'm sure the experience will help you get more points to develop your essay. Now, another issue of tradition and custom that we see here is that of polygamy. Is that of polygamy. Now, similar to bride worth, the debate on prohibition of the continuation of polygamy hasn't been warmly received by the majority of men and a fewer percentage of women in Africa. Now, not in every part of Africa, though. In some parts, okay? In some parts, they still believe that a man can have as many wives as possible. In some other parts, some men decide to have one wife, only one, and they are good to go. Another issue of custom and tradition that we see exhibited is the use of song and dance. And so when we are discussing custom and what tradition, we have seen what? What was the first thing we mentioned? We mentioned bride price. We have seen polygamy. We have also seen songs and dance. So I'm sure when we get to the question for the day, you saw that you were to discuss some do 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 of songs and dance. We will come to that. Songs and dances have played and continue to play important roles in the African continent. Some of the functions of songs and dances are what? To entertain, to, to retell a story or convey a message, and to celebrate an occasion. Song and dance or songs and dances are so important wherever you find yourself. Even at funerals where people are mourning, 
to still see them dance. At festivals, we see the display of dances and songs, and that portrays the value of tradition and culture. Now, as we go on, we are going to also look at um, tradition versus modernity. But another theme was mentioned here. That's the second theme. Good. The theme of status of women. The status of women. What do you think about the status of women? I want you to discuss that. When the phone lines are opened, you share with us what you think about the status of women as a theme. What are some of the things that come about or come up when we talk about women? Now, tradition versus modernity. Now, this is the central theme in the play. I want you, with your book in front of you, to write all the issues of tradition and all the issues of modernity that was exhibited or displayed in the text, and let's discuss it together. So, do your own analysis, write down tradition. So, write your tradition down, write your modernity down. Good. You see what I've done? I want you to do the same before you even develop your essay. Now, we are going to go for a short break. Now, as you go for the break, relax, try your hands on this, on the central theme, and I'm sure we are all going to have a lovely time and learn again together when we come back. Stay tuned, drink some water, and relax. See you soon. Student, please take note of the following changes to our timetable on Joy Learning. The revision show for SHS shows Monday to Friday at 7.30 p.m. with a repeat at 9.30 a.m. The revision show for JHS shows Monday to Friday at 6 p.m. with a repeat at 12.30 p.m. SHS 1 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 1.30 p.m. with a repeat at 7.30 a.m. SHS 2 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 2.30 p.m. with a repeat at 8.30 a.m. JHS 1 lesson Lesson shows Monday to Friday at 3.30 p.m. with a repeat at 6.30 a.m. And JHS2 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 5 p.m. with a repeat at 11.30 a.m. vacation and desperately want to catch up with the syllabus? Silao, sila. Don't fret because Joy Learning is giving you free extra classes not only on TV but on Zoom. Did you encounter any challenges with certain topics at school? Bring them here and we will help you get it solved with no sweat, Charlie. We are offering you a one-on-one -on -one teaching and learning opportunity with our award-winning TV teachers. Is it mathematics, general science, English language or any of the elective subjects that you had challenges with? Meet our teachers for easy solutions. How do you join these free extra classes on Zoom? One, download the Zoom app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Two, create your username. Three, look for our Zoom meeting password on all our social media handles every week. And voila, you are good to join our virtual classroom from the comfort of your home. Make a date with your facilitator this Saturday at 12 noon prompt. The Joy Learning teacher and you, we don't stop learning. Joy Learning. Keep learning. Hello, student. Please take note of the following changes to our timetable on Joy Learning. The revision show for SHS shows Monday to Friday at 7.30 p.m. with a repeat at 9.30 a.m. The revision show for JHS shows Monday to Friday at 6 p.m. with a repeat at 12.30 p.m. SHS 1 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 1.30 p.m. with a repeat at 7.30 a.m. SHS 2 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 2.30 p.m. with a repeat at 8.30 a.m. JHS 1 
Anderson shows Monday to Friday at 3.30 p.m. with a repeat at 6.30 a.m. And JHS2 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 5 p.m. with a repeat at 11.30 a.m. vacation and desperately want to catch up with the syllabus? Silao, sila. Don't fret because Joy Learning is giving you free extra classes not only on TV but on Zoom. Did you encounter any challenges with certain topics at school? Bring them here and we will help you get it solved with no sweat, Charlie. We are offering you a one-on-one -on -one teaching and learning opportunity with our award-winning TV teachers. Is it mathematics, general science, English language or any of the elective subjects that you had challenges with? Meet our teachers for easy solutions. How do you join these free extra classes on Zoom? One, download the Zoom app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Two, create your username. Three, look for our Zoom meeting password on all our social media handles every week. And voila, you are good to join our virtual classroom from the comfort of your home. Make a date with your facilitator this Saturday at 12 noon prompt. The Joy Learning teacher and you, we don't stop learning. Joy Learning. Keep learning. you on vacation and desperately want to catch up with the syllabus? Silao, sila. Don't fret because Joy Learning is giving you free extra classes not only on TV but on Zoom. Did you encounter any challenges with certain topics at school? Bring them here and we will help you get it solved with no sweat, Charlie. We are offering you a one-on-one -on -one teaching and learning opportunity with our award-winning TV teachers. Is it mathematics, general science, English language or any of the elective subjects that you had challenges with, meet our teachers for easy solutions. How do you join these free extra classes on Zoom? One, download the Zoom app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Two, create your username. Three, look for our Zoom meeting password on all our social media handles every week. And voila, you are good to join our virtual classroom from the comfort of your home. Make a date with your facilitator this Saturday at 12 noon prompt. The Joy Learning teacher and you, we don't stop learning. Joy Learning. Learning. Keep learning. Hello, welcome back, welcome, welcome back to your seats in your chairs. Yeah, and I'm also welcome. All right, so before we went on break. Before I ask you to go and drink water, we were looking at the theme of tradition versus modernity. The theme of tradition versus modernity. Now, what are some of the main issues that you identified with tradition and modernity? If you have a question like this, to discuss the theme of tradition versus modernity in the play, The Lion and the Jewel. What are some of the issues that you write under tradition and some of the issues that you write under modernity? The phone lines will be open shortly. Colin, let's share our views on the theme of tradition versus modernity and see how you answer this question. Okay, so the phone lines are open. You can call 030-2211-705706. It's on the screen. Call in and let's see how you've been able to outline the issue of tradition and the issue of modernity. All right, are you having challenges with it? Don't worry, let's make it simpler, okay? And so one issue of tradition that we can all identify is what? Baroque, 
Sadiku and Sidi, they all represent tradition and customs of Ilonjali. So you can write it down. Write it. Sadiku, Baroka, and Sidi all represent the custom. Now, Sidi, for instance, let's take Sidi for instance. What did Sidi do for us to say that she represents tradition? Now, when she stands by her Yoruba tradition and um, says that and insists that if you don't pay my bride price, there is no way I'll follow you. That is a way of a representation of tradition. Now, another representation of tradition is that after Baroka, mm, when you fade impotence, and seduced the and broke her virginity. He said, it has happened, I have to marry you. And he married her. Okay. Hello, Reku. Good to have you on the call. Yes. Okay, do you want I'll call you back later. Okay. Let's go on. Rick, whose line has dropped. And so we have seen the tradition here. We've seen, uh, we just mentioned Sidi standing firm on her decision. No bride price, no marriage. We also see Baroka standing firm and marrying Sidi after breaking her virginity. He said, what? I will not allow you to go. After her virginity is broken by Baroka, Sidi decides to marry him in order to avoid the shame. And so tradition is also seen in that angle. Now, another thing that we can also see is that Sidi's regular use of Yoruba proverbs. So in the text, you saw that Sidi often made use of Yoruba proverbs. That is with tradition. I hope. Hello, Kelvin. Yes. Well done for staying awake up to this point. Hello, now, tell me what you think of the tradition, the things that were exhibited in the, in the drama. We lost Kelvin too. Let's go on. Now let's move away. We've identified three things that shows tradition here. Now let's move to modernity. Now the first thing of modernity that we see is with who? Lakunle. So Lakunle is cool, right? Mm -hmm. Lakunle educating the young people about the European tradition. So he has started indoctrinating them. He started in, in impacting the modern ideologies into them. And eventually, I'm sure in the next couple of years, all we are going to see is that they are all going to start adopting the style of the modern people. So Lacunle's education, educating the young people. Another aspect of modernity that we see is the love for the pictures and the magazine. So the people having the desire mm -hmm, to take pictures, to get their pictures published and all that. We see that they are also gradually stepping towards modernization. Let's take pictures. Let's get our pictures published in the magazine. It wasn't there. The traditionalists don't have time for that. It is the modern people. And so we also see another aspect of modernity in that space. Another aspect of modernity that is evidently clear is what? Baroque's stamping machine. 
Mm -hmm. That is also an is also an evidence of modernity. And so right now we have seen some few traditional um, things, traits that were exhibited. We have also seen modernity traits that were exhibited. Now at the end of the day, is tradition going to win over modernity? It could be a win-win situation or a win-lose situation. Hello, Salamatu. Hi, madam. Good to have you. Sala, have you read the text? Please, yes. I want to give an answer to the tradition. Good girl. Let's go. Sadiku, as the first wife of Baruka, was very faithful and committed to the tradition of the village. Go, 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 go. Excellent. Well done. Any other? Please, mother, I'll come back. I'm you still analyzing it. Keep analyzing. I love that. Keep analyzing. Okay. I hope you are enjoying the lesson. <laughs> All right. Oh, that was a beautiful answer from her. So she stated that Sadiku, being a faithful wife, is an aspect of tradition. Good. She's still analyzing, so she will come back. Okay. Are you still trying to come up with more points for tradition and modernity? Go on. Keep analyzing as she just said she's doing. Okay. How is it going at your end? Are you coming out with a point? Any other points? Have you identified any? Keep writing them down. Another aspect of tradition that we can also identify is Lakunle, always greeting. Hello, Boateng. Yeah. Okay, Boateng. Boateng, what did you also identify? Yeah. What did you identify? Boateng, what did you also identify? Hello. 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 We can hear you. Go ahead, Boateng. All right, we lost Boateng. We lost Boateng there. Okay. All right, so I just added another point to the Western, and I said, Lakunle always greeting in the European style also exhibits the issue of modernity. Also, the issue of modernity. Uh, 
I need help. Yeah. We will come back shortly. Keep putting the ideas together. And when we come, we move on. To the street. student, please take note of the following changes to our timetable on Joy Learning. The revision show for SHS shows Monday to Friday at 7.30pm with a repeat at 9.30am. The revision show for JHS shows Monday to Friday at 6pm with a repeat at 12.30pm. SHS 1 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 1.30pm with a repeat at 7.30am. SHS 2 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 2.30pm with a repeat at 8.30am. JHS 1 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 3.30 p.m. with a repeat at 6.30 a.m. And JHS 2 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 5 p.m. with a repeat at 11.30 a.m. vacation and desperately want to catch up with the syllabus? Silao, sila. Don't fret because Joy Learning is giving you free extra classes not only on TV but on Zoom. Did you encounter any challenges with certain topics at school? Bring them here and we will help you get it solved with no sweat, Charlie. We are offering you a one-on-one -on -one teaching and learning opportunity with our award-winning TV teachers. Is it mathematics, general science, English language or any of the elective subjects that you had challenges with? Meet our teachers for easy solutions. How do you join these free extra classes on Zoom? One, download the Zoom app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Two, create your username. Three, look for our Zoom meeting password on all our social media handles every week. And voila, you are good to join our virtual classroom from the comfort of your home. Make a date with your facilitator this Saturday at 12 noon prompt. The Joy Learning teacher and you, we don't stop learning. Joy Learning. Keep learning. Hello, student. Please take note of the following changes to our timetable on Joy Learning. The revision show for SHS shows Monday to Friday at 7.30 p.m. with a repeat at 9.30 a.m. The revision show for JHS shows Monday to Friday at 6 p.m. with a repeat at 12.30 p.m. SHS 1 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 1.30 p.m. with a repeat at 7.30 a.m. SHS 2 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 2.30 p.m. with a repeat at 8.30 a.m. JHS 1 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 3.30 p.m. with a repeat at 6.30 a.m. And JHS 2 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 5 p.m. with a repeat at 11.30 a.m. vacation and desperately want to catch up with the syllabus? Silao, sila. Don't fret because Joy Learning is giving you free extra classes not only on TV but on Zoom. Did you encounter any challenges with certain topics at school? Bring them here and we will help you get it solved with no sweat, Charlie. We are offering you a one-on-one -on -one teaching and learning opportunity with our award-winning TV teachers. Is it mathematics, general science, English language or any of the elective subjects that you had challenges with? With, meet our teachers for easy solutions. How do you join these free extra classes on Zoom? One, download the Zoom app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Two, create your username. Three, look for our Zoom meeting password on all our social media handles every week. And voila, you are good to join our virtual classroom from the comfort of your home. Make a date with your facilitator this Saturday at 12 noon prompt. The Joy Learning teacher and you, we don't stop learning. Joy Learning. Keep learning. Hello, 
school student, please take note of the following changes to our timetable on Joy Learning. The revision show for SHS shows Monday to Friday at 7.30 p.m. with a repeat at 9.30 a.m. The revision show for JHS shows Monday to Friday at 6 p.m. with a repeat at 12.30 p.m. SHS 1 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 1.30 p.m. with a repeat at 7.30 a.m. SHS 2 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 2.30 p.m. with a repeat at 8.30 a.m. JHS 1 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 3.30 p.m. with a repeat at 6.30 a.m. And JHS 2 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 5 p.m. with a repeat at 11.30 a.m. student, please take note of the following changes to our timetable on Joy Learning. The revision show for SHS shows Monday to Friday at 7.30 p.m. with a repeat at 9.30 a.m. The revision show for JHS shows Monday to Friday at 6 p.m. with a repeat at 12.30 p.m. SHS 1 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 1.30 p.m. with a repeat at 7.30 a.m. SHS 2 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 2.30 p.m. with a repeat at 8.30 a.m. JHS 1 lesson Lesson shows Monday to Friday at 3.30 p.m. with a repeat at 6.30 a.m. And JHS 2 lesson shows Monday to Friday at 5 p.m. with a repeat at 11.30 a.m. Am I the one welcome or you are welcome? Okay, we are all welcome. So before we wind briefly, we were looking at the tradition versus modernity. And some of you called in to give wonderful, beautiful. Hello, Sharon. Oh, we lost Sharon. We lost Sharon. Okay. So some of you gave us beautiful ideas on what you think of um, tradition and modernity. And one of the... Salah is back. Hello, Salah. Hello, madam. Madam, please, I'm in SHS 1. Okay. You're doing well. I want to give an answer to the modernity. Okay. Lakunle was a person who discussed African tradition and wants to live in a very modernized life. Hmm, good job. Good job. Well done. Well done. So, Salah, bring more ideas. Okay. So, Salamati just gave us another idea. La Kunle's desire, so I'll just modernize her idea a bit. La Kunle's desire to live a modern life portrays the modernity. Another issue of modernity that we can say, I think I mentioned it, is his regular greetings, the way his way of life, his way of even thinking, the way he thought, the way he carried himself, also depicted his way of modernity let me quickly go over the tradition and then we move on to something else on the analysis so with tradition the first point we stated was baroka sadiku and hello eric yes madam okay eric Share with us what you've identified. Okay, madam. Um, okay, Eric. Share with us what you've identified. Eric, auntie can't hear you. And so humbly reduce the volume on your set so I can hear you well. Okay. Madam, Lakuni. And I started, um, Lequino was trusting in modernity less than the tradition. And he decided to marry marry um, Siri, and that modernity was 
That is all. Thank you, Madam. Well done, Eric. Well done. So, another point that Eric just gave us is Lakunle's desire to marry in the modern way of not paying bride price. Good job, good job. Hey, I'm super excited that I have you all seated, paying attention and discussing along with us. Well done, well done, well done. Now we are going on, but don't hesitate to call in anytime you discover an answer and you want to share with us. So the tradition, one of them we mentioned was that of um, CDs, desire for the bride price to be paid. CD stand. Okay. We also said Hello, Salah. Hello, my darling. Yes, my darling. Share with me what you've got again. Madam, I want to add more emphasis on the tradition. Go on, darling. Let's do that. Although CD was naive, but she was happy to remain, or she was happy to be a traditionalist. Okay. Okay. And she was very committed to the tradition of the village. Mm. She emphasized on if no bride. Christ, then no marriage. Well done. You deserve a clap because I just wrote that. CD stand on the payment of her bride price. Salama too. I'm super excited. Leave your number and we will get in touch. Okay? Okay. okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, madam. <laughs> You're welcome, darling. All right. Now we are moving on. Don't hesitate. Go on even after this analysis. Still write your points down and share with us. Still on the analysis. Now we are quickly going to look at the structure. Okay? We've looked at the plot. We've looked at the themes. We've looked at the analysis of the various characters. At this point, we are going to look at the structure of the play. How was it structured? Did the play take five days, ten days? Was, did it happen only in the morning, only in the afternoon, or only in the evening? So the play happened in a day. And in the day, we saw morning, afternoon, and evening. So the play takes place in one day as the scenes are divided into three parts. And so we have scene one, morning, scene two, afternoon, and scene three, evening. Good job. Now what happens in the morning? We are gonna have a quick overview of what actually happened in the morning. Lakunle, so in the morning, we see Lakunle teaching in his class, okay? Lakunle is teaching arithmetic times when he notices CD. Now, if you have read a text, you realize that this modern teacher leaves the classroom. Hmm. CD through the classroom's window, he sees CD carrying a pail of water on her head. He rushes out of the class and to the opposite side. He offers to help Sidi lower the bucket, but Sidi refuses. How can a teacher leave the classroom to go and help somebody? Okay, that's exactly what he did. And one of the things that this shows is that Sidi was hardworking. Lakunle actually appreciated and loved her because I don't think he'll be busy at a workplace and you will leave the workplace to
to go and help somebody carrying water on the head. It can only be love. Mm. But he lost it because he couldn't take care of it. He offers to help Sidi lower the bucket, but Sidi refuses. He seizes it, but some water spills on him. Hmm, that's nice, eh? Lakunle tells Sidi that she must stop carrying heavy loads on her head. Now, this is where, this is where modernity comes in, okay? So, now, there is um, the invention of buckets, that when we go to fetch water, we use the buckets to fetch the water. In those days, you go to the stream and you carry the water on your head in your cool, beautiful pot. But because of modernization, there are buckets and all other things that can help make carrying easy. He goes on to tell CD the effects of carrying the water. He says what? Your neck will shrink, which has linked to squash joints on your pupils okay so the effect is her neck will shrink which he likens to squash joints of his pupils he also complains of cd's traditional way of wearing that exposes her shoulders and outline of her breast hmm. so in this case Lakule tries to link to the traditional style of dressing where sometimes all they do is, you know, wrap some cloth around their breast area, cover their backs, and they are good to go. Modernization, like the dress I'm wearing, fully covered. However, in the modern context, there are also dresses that expose other parts, right? But then, I also see an aspect of tradition covering of the body, protecting oneself. In the session of Lakunle, Sidi has had enough of Lakunle that she asks if she can take the pill. However, Lakunle refuses, asking her to first marry her. Sidi replies, she has no problem with that. She can marry him one day as long as he pays the bride price and so right now when we're looking at the modernity versus tradition the calls that just came in our analysis that we've done so far you saw that it was evident that city held on firm to her tradition of bride price being paid lakule goes ahead to offer the reason he can't pay the bride price which he likens to buying a heifer, and we mentioned this earlier. But all these things we are mentioning, we are reading again, to let you know that it happened in the morning. He kisses her, but Sidi is repelled by that behavior, terming it as unclean. As they are walking, they hear a crowd of youth and jammers. And so, you see, let's look at this. When Lakunle kisses Sidi, Sidi is repelled, right? By that behavior, terming it as unclean. That behavior is seen by the modern people, the Western culture. But in our traditional setting, you don't just go around and kiss all over the place, right? Okay. And so we also see how Sidi upholds tradition of not just going around kissing on the streets. Now, as they are talking, they hear a crowd of youth and dramas. Sidi demands Lakunle to give her the bucket or else the people would cheer at her. It also brings um, tradition, how tradition is regarded. In those days, you cannot just see a boy and a girl standing at a corner doing all the things that young people do now. But because of modernization and modernity, people see that as normal. And because they see that as normal, everywhere you go, everywhere you go empty in, you see them holding each other. City opposed that because she valued 
tradition. I think it's something for us to learn, young people. Hello, my learners. Is it something to learn? Not it now. It's worth learning. Now, what event actually took place at noon? So at noon time, we see city and girls, they're looking at the pictures, right? So city is engrossed. I read, looking closely at the pictures of herself in the maxim. Following behind a slack on lay, who is carrying a bundle of firewood for city? Sadiqo meets them on the road leading to and from the village town. So this is the events that happened in the afternoon. We are looking at the structure. Don't forget. Sadiqo asks Sidi to be Baruka's wife. Sidi asks Sadiqo why Baruka is requesting for her hand after her images are published in the magazine. Why didn't he ask her to be his wife before her beauty was exposed to the world? Since she has refused to become Baroque's wife, Sadiqo requests her to accept Baroque's supper invitation at his house to celebrate the fame she has brought to the village. Sidi tells Sadiqo that she wasn't born the previous day, that she isn't conversant with Baroque's tricks. And so all these um, incidents happened at noon time. Sidi inquires why she is behaving as an insane person. Sadiqo reveals to Sidi the secrets. Sidi lives in the air. <clears throat> Happy to hear the good news, she exclaims. We want, we want, hooray for womankind. Mm. It was a loss for Sidi kind. They don't recognize Lakunle, who has joined their presence. They dance around the tree chanting, Take warning, my masters, we will catch you in the end. We will catch you in the end. And so, this is also what happened at noontime. We also see Baroka revealing to Sidi of a stamping machine he owns and all the things, you know, blah, 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 at noon. And so as you go on to read, my learners, you realize all the other incidents that happened. We have seen what happened at noon. We have seen what happened in the morning. And of course, I'm sure you are aware of what happened in the evening, right? Good. You are good students. And so there is a lot to be done when it comes to the analysis of the text. We have taken a lot of hours to go through all the things that you need to know. I've explained to you how you should answer the questions when you see them. If it's about character analysis, just identify the character, make a circle around the character, and based on your reading, let me give you an example. Okay, and so this is your exercise book. We want to analyze the character traits of Baroka, right? So Baroka. Then you draw a circle around Baroka. What can you say about Baroka? So this is an illustration for you. Do something like this. Let's go on. Do the same. Do the same for Lakunle. What can you say about Lakunle? Let's do the same for Sidi. Do same for Sidi. And who else are we doing same for? We are doing same for Sadaku. Sadiku.
Well done. I'm super excited to have attentive and wonderful students like you. Keep on following all the things that your teachers are teaching you. And don't forget that you are the best person who can achieve whatever you are planning to achieve. So keep working. Don't stop. Keep working. Don't stop. As usual, Jima will not end her lesson without sharing Jima's lines with you. Today, the line is simple, right? What is Jima's lines for today? You want to know? We've learned a lot of Jima's lines in the past. We've learned that keep pushing. You've got a seat in the space. There are a lot of lines we learned. The last line we learned, I shared with you, is that this is the time you can shine and so keep shining. And today, I want to share with you, it's simple, mirror it. That is Jimmy's lines. Not a lot of lines, just mirror it. What are you mirroring? Why you want to see yourself in the next couple of years? You want to be a lawyer, mirror it. Keep looking at it and keep working at it. You want to be a judge, mirror it. You want to be an architect, mirror it. You want to be an engineer, mirror it. Don't forget, you can be a carpenter, mirror that, and that will be your breakthrough. Yours can be a fashion designer, mirror it. And tomorrow, we will all meet at the top and smile. Keep working, mirror it. You've got to sit in the space. It's been here on Joy Learning with Juma Labi. So we meet again, stay blessed, keep working, and zero it. Bye-bye.